Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Powered by Florida Sport Fishing TV. What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome to my rigging station. Right here, this is where it all happens. In advance of every trip, we spend a ton of time preparing because I'll tell you what, proper preparation long before you ever hit the water is absolutely vital for success, regardless if you're targeting swordfish or snapper. Speaking of which, that's exactly our topic of conversation here today, the mutton snapper. I'll tell you what, this is potentially my absolutely favorite fish to target. And I've targeted everything from bonefish to blue marlin, but there's something really special about big mutton snapper. What an extraordinary fish. They're really popular down here around all of Florida. Their range is from Massachusetts all the way down to Brazil, throughout the Caribbean, uh, throughout the Bahamas. They're very popular, of course, in the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic side of Florida here, and of course, the epicenter of world-class mutton snapper fishing is in the dry tortugas west of Key West. That's where it all starts right there. What a really cool fish. You know, they start off by spawning in the springtime here, May, June, July, around the full moon. That's what triggers the spawn. They form large spawning aggregations in really popular areas like Riley's Hump, which is by the Dry Tortugas, places where year after year they go back to spawn. And these areas are protected, and for good reason, because you literally could sink the boat with fish there. There's just so many of them. The females will spawn up to a million and a half eggs per event. I mean, think about that, a million and a half eggs. That's tremendous. Those eggs will eventually make their way as larvae into these backcountry estuaries, mangrove shorelines, canals, secluded bays, and grass beds. That's where they slowly start to grow, they start to mature, they feed on little shrimp and tiny little fish, and shellfish, and all sorts of good stuff. And then of course, they'll slowly gain weight and start to grow, and the mutton snapper will reach maturity at about five to six years of age. And that puts the fish at about 16 inches, which explains why the size limit is 18 inches. And by the way, here around Florida, it is an 18 inch minimum size, five mutton snapper per person within your 10 snapper aggregate. Okay, those are the rules. Once those fish start to gain weight, they're gonna need larger food sources. They're gonna need more fuel. And eventually they make their way offshore. They make their way from those shallow grass beds where they feed and thrive and they're protected from predators. They make their way to the reef system. And then eventually they continue to go further. They continue to go deeper where there's larger prey items, larger bait fish, grunts, jacks, smaller uh, juvenile snappers, pretty much anything, lobsters, sea urchins, they'll eat anything that they want. And ultimately, they'll reach trophy status. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today, because that's what I like to target, is those really, really big muttons. Let's define what that means. What's a trophy mutton snapper? Well, in my eyes, it's gotta be 30 inches. A 30 inch mutton snapper is a fish that's gonna be in the high teens, might even be 20 pounds, okay? That fish is about 15 years old and it is at its peak. It's at its peak, it's at the top of the game right there, okay? The largest recorded mutton snapper is over 30 pounds. So they'll continue to grow, they'll continue to gain weight and they'll live as long as 40 years. But again, that 15 year lifespan up to that 30 inch size, that's where it's all at right there. And let me tell you something. I think it is one of my favorite fish. I don't think, I know it's one of my favorite fish to target because they're so challenging. Look, anybody can go out and catch one every now and then, you know, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. Anybody can go on those shallow patch reefs and catch a couple smaller, you know, 16 to 20 inch muttons. But to go out there and to consistently target the trophy muttons and to come back, you know, successful, that takes skill, that takes the proper tackle, that takes the proper mindset, the proper bait, and it takes dedication. And there's not a lot of guys that have put that whole puzzle together and can consistently go out there, target these fish, and come back, you know, as a winner. There's just a handful of guys around the state, believe it or not.
Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Dubro fishing, four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I can focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. Chaos. Gear matters. Yeah. Oh my god! That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Deep Glow outshines the competition. With a robust housing, durable glass dome, and stainless steel hardware, Deep Glow lights are the toughest, brightest, and easiest to install. Throw them in, plug them in, and let the show begin. I've literally created my own feeding frenzy. Residential or commercial, one or 50 lights, Deep Glow increases property values, creates loyal customers to waterfront businesses, and provides years of trouble-free service. Tell them Captain Mike sent you and receive a free timer. So it all starts with seasons. As I mentioned earlier, the mutton snappers, they're gonna migrate, they're gonna spawn around the full moon periods in the springtime. It's a great time to chase these fish. Here in the Florida Keys, in the middle Florida Keys, I find that the fall entering the winter time frame, all the way through the spring, this bite's gonna be on. Okay, it's gonna be on from here on out. Okay. There are other parts of the state where it peaks at other times, but like I said, here in the middle Florida Keys and probably throughout the entire Keys Island chain, it's going to be that same time frame. So it's not a small window. It's a big window. You have a lot of time, a lot of months to target these fish. There's no closed season. They're open year round, but you're going to find that certain times of the year, you're going to have better conditions and the fish are gonna bite better. Because I'll tell you what, if there's one thing I learned about chasing big trophy muttons, man, it's conditions driven. Your success is not only based on preparation, it's not only based on bait, tackle, rigs, where you're fishing, but it's based on conditions, okay? It's a very conditions driven fishery. What do I mean by that? Well, look, this is a bottom fish. The mutton snapper feeds hunts and thrives on or near the bottom. But he will swim 20, 30, 40 feet off the bottom. Heck, I've jigged him 50 feet off the bottom in deep water. But that's the rarity. They're usually hunting on or near the bottom. They like sand. They like low profile exposed rock. They're not really into big wrecks with a lot of profile and high relief. You know, and you really don't want to fish those areas. Listen to what I'm saying to you, because you know what's around those big high profile, high relief wrecks? That's where you're going to find a lot of sharks and a lot of the predators, Goliath groupers, barracudas. And I'll tell you what, there's, I don't know if there's anything more frustrating than getting out there, hooking a beautiful trophy mutton snapper and halfway up the thing gets eaten by a 300 pound shark. That's really, really frustrating. So again, I like to fish those wrecks, that's what I'm looking for. Ideal depth, broken bottom, 150 to 250 foot. That zone right there, that's a big, big zone, but that's where it's at for me with the mutton snappers. And it's pretty much at same depth all over the state of Florida, regardless if you're up off St. Augustine and you gotta run you know, dozens and dozens of miles offshore to get to that open bottom or to that broken bottom, that low profile rock, coral, and exposed, you know, relief coming out of the bottom. Um, if it's in the Gulf of Mexico, the dry tortugas are here off a of marathon in the Florida Keys. It's at 150 to 250 foot range. Understand, 
When you find a piece of bottom and you're focused on mutton fishing, understand that these fish will roam all around the wreck. They will roam 100 yards, 200 yards away from the structure. And when I say that word wreck, understand that could be a small piece of bottom potentially the size of my 39-foot CV. It doesn't generally mean it's a 200-foot freighter sitting on the bottom of the ocean. A lot of these wrecks, a lot of these coral heads, exposed live bottom are small pieces, but that's all that it takes for the mutton snapper to hunt in that area. That fish will patrol that whole territory, primarily down current of the structure. Remember that down current. He's waiting for a prey item to make the fatal mistake and to leave the structure and to wander out into that open. May it be a crab, may it be a fish, whatever it is, he's out there just waiting, patrolling. And when he sees something and something catches his attention, he'll sniff it out, he'll approach it, he'll investigate it, and he'll commit. And when he does, it's a vicious bite, vicious. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if there's anything more satisfying than saying, hey, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna find these big mutton snappers, I'm gonna put in the time, I'm gonna put in the effort that's required to catch them, and then coming home, you know, with a few trophy fish, I'll tell you what, really, really exciting. So, I found these spots, right? I know they're there, I found them, how? Some of them are public spots, the good ones are not. You're gonna have to network, talk to other captains, get online, do whatever you gotta do to find some bottom. Okay, there's a lot of sources out there with charts, all kinds of stuff. And then you have to decide once you get there, are you gonna anchor or drift? A lot of guys will tell you anchoring is the only way to catch these muttons, and that's not true, okay? Not true at all. It's a great way to catch them because they like that bait to be really natural, and if you're drifting too fast, the bait may spin, a lot of different things may happen. I prefer to drift, and I find the ideal drift speed to be 0.5, like half a mile an hour, up to about 1.2, 1.3 miles an hour. I'm covering ground, but I could still have a nice, clean presentation. I generally will drift alongside the wreck. I might do three or four drifts around a wreck, getting as far as 100 yards or more away from it before I get back up and start my drift again. Constantly keeping an eye on my Furuno fish finder. I'm looking for readings on the bottom because I'll tell you what, just because you're not getting bites doesn't mean they're not there. The mutton snappers are very picky. They'll turn on and off like a light switch. So it's real important to have situational awareness and know exactly what's happening underneath the boat, regardless if you're getting bit or not. Episode. We talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got them. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got it. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Next is tackle. A 
I'll tell you what, very straightforward, but it's all in the details, just like everything else, right? Very straightforward, but I'm telling you, don't make a mistake here. Look, an eight foot chaos snapper grouper rod. It's a composite rod. It's a combination of glass and graphite. So it's very strong yet very sensitive. It's rated for 30 to 80 pound line, even though you would really need to fish 80 on here. It's matched to a Shimano Talica 12. Okay, just an absolute workhorse of a lever drag reel, two speed, which is nice because sometimes when those sharks are thick, you gotta pop that baby into low gear and you just need to crank and get that fish up past the sharks to stand any chance at all. The reel is loaded with 40 pound diamond braid. This is perhaps one of the most important parts of the entire equation is that braid. Okay, it's very thin, but it's incredibly strong. From that braid, we have a long leader that we fish right there. It's, it's 40 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon leader. Now understand the combination of the 40 pound diamond braid and the 40 pound leader provides you that perfect balance of stealth and strength. Our rig is relatively simple. We bring our braid down to a barrel swivel. Prior to tying on the barrel swivel, we're gonna put on an eight ounce egg sinker. Certainly you can fish with lighter, you can fish with you know, heavier sinkers based on depth. I have found that in that 150 to 250 foot range, an eight ounce egg sinker is just absolutely ideal. It's a typical fish finder rig with a sliding egg sinker. You've seen it used everywhere else. It's nothing special, but make sure that every one of your connections is absolutely bulletproof. The next important part of the equation is the hook itself. Now, I'll use circle hooks. I'll also use J hooks. If I'm fishing in the Gulf, I'm using a 7-0 inline tournament circle hook. If I'm fishing here in the Atlantic, I'm not required to fish that circle hook, so I'll fish a 7-0 live bait J hook. Speaking of bait, my personal preference, no question, you guys know it, is pinfish. Right there, nothing beats a live pinfish as far as I'm concerned when you're out there targeting these big trophy mutton snappers. Okay, because not only do the big mutton snappers eat them, so does everything else. So it's not uncommon for your bycatch to include cobia, African pompano, blackfin tuna, big jacks, all sorts of stuff. Red snappers, they all eat the pinfish, but the muttons love them. It's a very hearty bait. They're easy to catch with pinfish traps. You could also purchase them from local tackle shops. They're easy to keep alive in a bait well or a bait pen at the dock until you need them. Okay, just feed them regularly because they're really aggressive feeders. Second, ballyhoo. Use a ballyhoo, get out there, get yourself some fresh ballyhoo, anchor up on the reef or wherever it is that you've got some broken bottom, put a chum bag in and net yourself with the ballyhoo, some fresh ballyhoo, because that is perhaps the second best bait that you could use down here. Goggle eyes is another great bait. But at the end of the day, the key is fresh. I would rather take a piece of kingfish. Listen to what I'm saying to you here. Kingfish, absolutely killer mutton snapper bait. Nice, fresh piece of kingfish, has a lot of odor, they can't resist it. No one thinks of it, no one says, hey, I'm not gonna fillet a big king and use it for bait for mutton snapper. I am, okay? It's a great bait as far as a dead bait is concerned. So we've got the pinfish, we've got the ballyhoo, we've got goggle eyes, but there's a lot of other baits, squid, pilchards. When that mutton snapper is on the feed and he's hungry, he's gonna eat. That's the bottom line. On the other hand, if he's not feeding, I don't care what you put in front of him, T-bone steak, he's not touching it no matter what. So once we get out there, we get in position, we bait our, our hook, generally with a pinfish, we'll bring that hook right up from the bottom of the chin, right up the center of the head, the forehead area. Don't come out a nostril with the tip of the hook or the pinfish will wiggle right off the hook. That's another little tip for you. We're fishing a long leader, 30 to 50 feet. 30 to 50 feet of that 40 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon. Why so long? Number one, stealth. We don't want that fish to see any of the braid. We don't want that fish to see any monofilament. We wanna be as stealthy as we can. More importantly, the sinker. We don't want that fish to hear that eight ounce sinker bounce it off the bottom. We don't want that. If he hears it, he's gone. 
He's too smart. He's really, really a challenging fish to fool. This is not a small fish. He's at the absolute top of his game. He's an apex predator. So keep that sinker a long ways away from the bait. Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries, and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the Bally Hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the Bally Hoop is a must-have for every angler. Simply deploy the Bally Hoop and watch the magic. With the Bally Hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast, and simple. Ask for the Bally Hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. Dependable terminal tackle is vital in every venue. That's why professional anglers targeting bonefish to blue marlin rely on diamond fishing products. With an extensive selection of the finest monofilaments, fluorocarbon, and braided fishing line in the world, it's time you avoid the rest and rig with the best. Diamond Fishing Products, the official line of Florida Sport Fishing TV, tournament winning fishing teams, and busy charter captains from coast to coast. We set up, free spool, we drop down, egg sinker hits the bottom. I keep my thumb on the spool for just about 30 seconds because I want that leader to stretch out. At that point, boat is drifting along, the 39 CB is drifting and I'm slowly feeding the bait out. I want to slow it down. I don't want to drag that bait along with me. I want it to either stay put or to just slowly move across the bottom. So I'm constantly paying out line, which is another benefit to these Talicas in the 40 pound diamond braid. I've got unlimited line capacity on here, so I never need to worry about that. And I'll just keep feeding out that bait, feeding it out until you really feel pow. And what that is, that's your big mutton snapper that came up to your bait, he investigated it, he committed, he grabbed it, it's in his mouth. Let him run. Let him go. Let him get it down his throat. Okay, let him eat it. And especially if it's a live pinfish, he's got to turn it. He can't swallow that pinfish tail first. He's got to swallow it head first. He's not going to get you hung up in the bottom. This is not a grouper. Okay, he's not going to go under a ledge. He likes that open bottom out there. Okay, so he'll scoot across the bottom, but he's not going to get you hung up. Let him eat the bait, let him run, then lock it up and just real tight, real tight. Don't be swinging back. It's not Saturday morning Bassmasters, okay? Just real tight, drive that hook home, and I'll tell you what, you're gonna know instantly if you've got a mutton snapper because the rod's gonna bend double over, line's gonna come screaming off your reel, and you're gonna start screaming like a little sissy. Now, in addition to the bait, we also jig these fish because I'll tell you what, some days they like the meat and some days they like the metal. Our standard slow pitch jig outfits, a six foot three rod, rated for 150 to 400 grams. It's matched to an Oshia Jigger 2000. Diamond braid, again, the yard line, 30 pound test, 40 pound fluorocarbon leader, that same 40 pound leader. And of course, our number one jig for mutton snapper and for everything down here in the Florida Keys is that Mobster 250 from Jigs R Us in the silver glow pattern. This is it, you come fishing with me, I've got one jig tied on all of my rods and I've got one jig as a spare. There are multiple of them, but one style and it's that jig right there. Again, I can't stress it enough. It has incredible action, it mimics a ballyhoo and the big muttons just can't resist it. But let me point something out. Mutton snapper are not the only fish that eat these jigs. They're not the only fish that eats ballyhoo. So you better bring some extra jigs. You better bring extra terminal tackle. And by the way, 7265, that's the number of that VMC hook. We talked about the 40 pound diamond braid. We talked about the presentation fluorocarbon. We talked about the eight ounce egg sinkers. You better bring extras of everything. You're gonna lose rigs. I promise you, if you get on a hot mutton bite, you're not gonna land every fish. You're gonna bust some off. Different things are gonna happen. These fish are gonna exploit every weak link that you have. Do not chum when you are mutton fishing because you will just attract more and more sharks to you and you obviously don't wanna do that. Like I said, you can anchor, you can drop a bait right to the bottom and just sit there and wait for the rod to go whack. Not my style of fishing, even though very effective, especially if there's a lot of people on a boat, let's just say a head boat, you know, makes it really effective to fish for muttons that way. 
I prefer the drifting technique, okay? It's really a matter of preference depending on where you are, where you're fishing. Fortunately, here in the Florida Keys, I've got a lot of spots, a lot of these wrecks that I could fish where I can pound them all and literally couldn't fish them all in one day if I tried. So a lot of different spots. However, if you only have one or two spots, you may want to anchor and focus all of your efforts right there. I have to stress, fresh bait is vital, perhaps more vital in this fishery than in any other. In any other, remember that. And again, not to catch the small muttons, to catch the trophy mutton snappers, the ones that we're after, the ones that you're hoisting up and screaming that you're so proud that you caught. Okay, how about going out catching a dozen of those, you know, during the day? That is something that you will never forget. Remember, you've got a 30-foot leader. You cannot reel once you get that egg sinker up to the rod tip, right? Don't get alarmed because all of these big mutton snappers are generally going to get barotrauma, and when they're close to the surface, they're going to float up anyway, and it's not like you're losing any part of that battle. That is how you target and catch trophy mutton snapper here across the Florida Keys and in other areas of Florida as well. But if you want to do it consistently, you need to be dedicated. You need to be focused. You need to be committed to this fishery or you'll never achieve consistent success. Connect with the crew on Instagram at Florida Sport Fishing TV. Catch our extreme seminar series at www.fsftv.com and get hooked up.